Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. How are you? Out here, we're enjoying this, the freshness of this new day. The rain has been coming through vigorously the last few days and cooled down the whole atmosphere, and we love it. Also added some much needed um, strength hydration strength in the form of hydration and everything else that rain comes with to the soil it's not just hydration like h2o and all that kind of stuff it's real water you know just like many people of our nutritionists and everything are sharing with us you know it's very important to eat your water in terms of uh, how we can get proper hydration instead of just depending on drinking bottled water and good spring water and all that stuff which of course has its great benefit the rain to the plants is like mother's milk you know it's just absolutely no alternative there's nothing that beats that so we're waiting for our sister the herb sister to come on. Um, and we're going to have a conversation with her today. Mm -hmm. Pray that your day is going exceptionally well. Just getting started on this part of the world. Some of y'all may be joining us from other parts of the world, the earth. Uh, and uh, we join you, we greet you. Wherever you're joining from, we greet you. So I'm looking for my sister, I still can't find her. Okay, there we go. Hey. there hmm. yes so hey great herbal morning blessed love great herbal morning can you yes. see me i can't see you for some reason i can't see you yet you can't see me can you see me now no, oh, but if you can see me. Oh, oh man. Uh, I'm out here in my backyard about to demonstrate something okay, <laughs> before we turn ahead. it over to you. Go start, get started. Thing. So uh, the, the funny thing is, <laughs> you know, the universe always is like, you can show them better than you can tell them. So I walked out my house about to run to the farm to do this interview with you and got stung by a wasp. Oh boy. The instinct kicked in right away and I'm about to demonstrate to the family how simple it is. Okay. I got all this plantain in my front yard. Okay. So okay. of course I went right into right into motion. So this is the broadleaf plantain. Yeah. Okay. Grab leaf plant in here. I'm gonna go sit down somewhere so we can talk with my big sister, Dr. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna okay. demonstrate to y'all how, uh, how simple it is. It made a big difference. I've done it already, but I'm just going through the motions again because as soon as I got bit, I'm like, what in the world? But it's, you instead of panicking and all, my, you gotta have some of my black salve. Yeah, man. I need it in my life. <laughs> you know, I'm a country boy, and I don't be scared to get out there, so I ain't going to be walking around and unprepared. So this right here is the plantain. I'm, I'm familiar with the other one, the other kind, a little bit more than this one. But okay. I'm, I'm this, this black, 
back. I want to ask those of y'all in the chat, can you see Dr. Ashe? Because I can't see her. Once y'all can see her, we good. Uh, so, real quick, chew it first. And by chewing it, I'm getting this my, my saliva to activate the medicine for me. So I chew, chew it. Not chewing it to, 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 to the pulp. That's chewing it enough to activate the saliva. And I'm putting it, I put it right on the um, thing. It made a huge difference. Like I basically hardly feel it right now. As if I was going into panic mode. Oh, I'm not big by a <laughs> Then it would be a different type of problem, you know? And it reminded me, uh, as I introduce our beloved Dr. H.A., it reminded me of a, um, of a proverb. It said, when a man is stung by a bee, he doesn't destroy all the hives. <laughs> That's true. Something to think about. Something to think about out there. And that can relate to many things in life, you know. When a man is stung by a bee, he don't destroy all the hives. So, <sighs> such is life. But anyway, we have on the phone or on the line with the, someone who is her work go before her, her work speak for herself, for themselves, I should say, um, you know, as a healer, as someone who has done such a wonderful job of reminding us about the power of Mama Earth, the power of, uh, you know, the plant, the sacred plant, the wisdom of the grandmothers. So it's not just about, well, this is a this and this is a this, but that coming through the portal of an unbroken line of wisdom of our mother who have always been our healers and our caretakers you know regardless of what patriarchal model of the roman world tries to say that's just been the reality so happy to have you on this morning thank Dr. you so much for inviting me i'm really happy to be here and we've been attempting to do this for a while, so I'm glad we got it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of picking up our schedules, but nothing before the time. But I just thought that was funny as I'm getting ready to talk to the herb sister. So hey, universe, say hey, you can show them better. You can tell them. <laughs> give you a little, give you a little walk bite, so you can demonstrate. <laughs> right, right, right. And so what's happening with you? How's, how's everything? Well, you know out here every morning connecting and, and being grateful for being able to um, have the have the land and be on the land just recognizing that it's a gift every day and um, mm. yeah and 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 enjoying it you know enjoying my life so I enjoy my life through the garden you know mm. people say oh I'm going to this and I'm doing that and I'm like I'm going outside. <laughs> I'm going in the garden. I mean, so you got to, you know, bloom where you planted and, 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 and take your happiness everywhere. And this is an instant gardening is a immediate instant way of connecting with your life. And um, when, when I was even, you know, even in all the classes that I teach, I talk to everybody about, you know, right now, I was looking for a place to sit. And so I just sat on the ground. Why? Mm. Because I need a wound recharged. Might mm. as well do it now, you know? And that's mm. where we get it from sitting on the ground and being in, in nature. And I talked to people about how the grandmothers would go out there in the garden to get our food. And they out there with their big house dress on with nothing on under it because they already knew that secret. They didn't know what exactly but they knew that that's the feeling that they liked mm -hmm. and so having that energy from the earth come up into your body through your your creative chakra is the mm -hmm. number one way to heal your body and heal your mind and to set your mind into the right direction for what you need to do and also be inspired 
And so mm. I do that every, I come out here every morning, every single day. And, um, and I, I just, I just really give thanks for it on a regular basis. Good thing. But you, you just, you just shared a whole, a whole few books worth of, for, of inspiration, information right there. So I want to start with what you shared about the garden being your happy space and the immediate kind of uh, gratification, for lack of a better word. That's my word. Right. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly. Please elaborate a little bit more on that. And let's, I'm asking you to elaborate. Has it always been that way, like from you or a child, or did you come to some point in your life where this became something so you can, you can make the distinction, like, man, I was doing this before, but now the garden, now I see where my place is, my my happy spot. Uh, what has that journey been like? Well, you know, I think um, my Uncle Bayman, he's the one who taught me you plant some for you and some for the rabbits, you know? So being out there in the garden early, I recognized that it, it, was, the, it was the most fun out of all the stuff to do in the hood in Flint, being in the garden and... Um, growing tomatoes and, and just walking around behind my Uncle Bayman was the most fun out of the kickball and the hide and seek and everything. I, that was what I really loved. Mm. And so I ended up constantly looking for opportunities to be close to nature. So I ended up being involved in, you know, social organizations, which social justice organizations was the YWCA. And that's, I think, how I got my social justice training, you know. Um, I even had to train them, you know. After they got me started, I ended up turning my power on them, you know. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, going to their, their, their Y camp and just enjoying being out there in the woods by the lake and the water. And, and that's why it's so good for inner city kids who don't have that to be able to go out into the forest because it changes their perspective on their life and on their world, you know? And, and that's what it did for me. I set goals at, you know, nine, 10 years old that I was gonna have X amount of acres and I was gonna be in, you know, farming and gardening and everything. And that was my goal throughout going to Berkeley and doing all the other stuff that I was doing. I was always looking for that, them acres of land, you know? So, I, I think that, you know, once you put kids in a healing environment, they recognize it for what it is and they want to be in that environment, you know? And, um, and so it's been my happy place. And I recognize the young as a young child, cause I didn't, I didn't miss a summer going to camp, you know, until I got to be like, and I would, then I got to be 15, 16 and I was a camp counselor. I mean, that was my ritual. So I think, that you know sending your kids out in the woods to camp or going camping with your kids is the best possible thing that you could do for them you know yeah and what, what i say is that it, it it transcends the different um sciences so it's not just so they can learn to love plants it's but, all the sciences yeah it transcends because you know like you're saying for instance about the mothers who would go out with their house big house dress the grandmothers and they knew that there was something there that that was beneficial to them that would even heal their spirit you know heal their, 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 their emotional energy not just while you know feel good and blowing in the breeze or whatever as they go and pick food for the family you know it starts your day off right. It starts your day off right, you know? And when you start your day off right, you have, you have, you know, how they talk about right mind and right action and right, that's where you get it from, is starting on the ground. You know, start from the ground up. When they talk about foundation, foundation is the ground, you know? And, you know, even just sitting here amongst my little zinnias and, you know, I love zinnias. Everybody that comes to the class, I got zinnia seeds for y'all. You know, yeah, zinnias, they yeah. grow like that. They give you a lot. Each one of the flowers, each one of the flowers is a million seeds. 
So you get one flower, and next year you be giving people zinnias. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and and that's the thing about gardening, also, and being in the yard is the immediate need to share. You know, even us here, we want to share with people to get them to understand and re and connect to this because we were traumatized around the earth and around working the earth, and we gotta heal that trauma by getting back to the earth and yeah. recognizing that it was the people, it wasn't the earth that was doing it to us, yeah. you know? Our sister Leah Penningman, that book, Farmer Wild Black, such a powerful book. And in that book, she was quoting somebody else, it's not her, uh, that kind of initiated those words, but said that the earth was the scene of the crime, or the land was the scene of the crime, but the land was not the criminal. Right. Yeah. I didn't know about that, but that's exactly that was that's exactly where we need to be. We can't keep blaming our trauma on the planet, on the earth. It was the people. But we away from those folks now. But heal yeah. yourself. Heal yourself. Yeah. You know, eat from the ground, get those minerals. That's how you keep yourself going well. That's how you keep yourself good. That's how you stay flexible and happy and energized and a flow of detoxification and it's everything you know it's not one thing it's everything you know and when people recognize that it's everything and they realize that they got it and it's free for them but just to go outdoors and sit on the ground it's another one of those things like you realize that i got a bathtub that came with my house and it's doing all the healing inside next to the kitchen you know <laughs> That bathtub is doing the, the doing the most with the the, the, the mineral salts, the Epsom yeah. and the sea salt, and been soaking in the water. And the water is part of the earth. I mean, everything that we're dealing with that's helping us is part of the earth. The mama. So I want to ask you, even though it may be obvious, I mean, I'm sure because of how I was raised, it resonates immediately. But when you talk about the wisdom of the grandmother. And you've always met with that from I've known you. You've been a guest on my show from the 90s when I used to be on late night radio. You always talk about the wisdom of the grandmothers. Why is it the wisdom of the grandmothers and not the grandfathers or the uncles or the aunties or the whoever else we could think about? Well, Explain you know, what that really means. It's not. I say like the wisdom of the grandmothers, but I also say wisdom of the herbal elders because I do spread the spread the um the love. But and you know, I talk about my uncle Bayman, you know, he was the one. No no woman took me out to the earth to to show me how to heal. But that's what I do because I realized what it did for me and where I got it from. But the women create culture. Women create ritual in families and habits and all of that so you know i don't know where my uncle bayman got it from soon as we hang up i'm gonna check with him but and you know he's still and, with us huh he's still alive he's still with us yeah yeah oh, beautiful, beautiful. i was gonna ask you that yeah go ahead i don't mean to touch you go no, ahead no no that, that's good that's good yeah yeah so i'm gonna ask him but the thing is is that women are creators and women create these kinds of things. And so when women are doing something, it's definitely going to stay within the family. It's definitely going to become part of the family rituals and the family manifestation, you know? So your uncles and stuff, yeah, they can do it. And, and they have a role, you know? Because, you know, I know a lot of women, they're not trying to carry a, a 50 pound bag of soil or whatever, but I don't mind because I'm telling women, keep your bone density. What you can do when mm -hmm. you're 20, if you keep doing it, you can do it when you're 40 and when you're 50 and when you're 60, you know? Mm -hmm. So everybody needs to carry soil. <laughs> everybody needs to shovel, you know? Yeah. It's a healing thing, and it's a rhythm. It's a rhythm mm -hmm. in nature that you get when you're doing stuff outside that takes you into a meditation that helps you, you know? So... um it's nothing out here that everybody can't do. Even little children, I buy the little baby 
you know, shovels and, you know, uh, rakes and stuff, and you put them in their little spot and let, give them their tools and just let them go, you know? And that helps them to eat, eat the vegetables and eat their food and be, you know, conscious of what food is, you know? So now they're not thinking, let's get a snack and they want to run in and get a bag of chips. They want a snack. I got all of these, you know, tomatoes, baby little tomatoes that I can't wait. And when I'm out here, I'll just be popping them. I love the heat that's on them and they like hot little t t little cherries and I'm just going around popping stuff in my mouth all over the garden, you know? And and I and when we lived out in Newton County, my kids, I gave them all kinds of tours and that's all parents. Whenever you got your kids connecting to the earth, you got to bring somebody on your land or on your property that can show them what they can eat and what they can't eat. Because after a while, they, they start feeling so in tune with nature, they think they can eat everything there. You know, mm -hmm. and it's some stuff that we call bird berries. It's only for the birds. It's not for you, <laughs> you know, but that powers your kids up when they think that they can find stuff on the earth to eat, you know, and, um, and, and so that's what we want. We want to power our children in all aspects. And, and this is one of the fundamental aspects is allowing your children to feel like the earth is theirs. They take care of it. They don't throw paper. My kids carry carry paper in their pockets because they've been taught you don't throw stuff on the planet, you know? So when, when you know, when you wash in their clothes, you got, you know, tons of paper and rocks and, you know, sticks that they thought was interesting. I mean, they started looking at the planet with an appreciation. My daughter, she 26. She still go and collect little, um, crickets and bug carcasses that she see you know on the on the planet and put them in match boxes and she got a whole collection of all kinds of little critters you know it's respect and and she recognizes their beauty she tries to see how she could use them in art because you know she's a fine art student at georgia state i mean we are a, a art an artist in an art scape when we gardening and when we are appreciating it you know because it's pretty incredible when you see all the different leaves and and you know their purposes and the different bark and it's just it's more incredible than a, than a marble movie <laughs> Look up. if you have eyes to see and what you're talking about is having been exposed at a young age and then your own, you know, God power taking over and keeping that interest in you to, to, with, with an open heart so that you don't, you don't face creation with like an adverse kind of energy. And I was thinking the other day, just about the Western mindset, you know, you know, I taught high school for many years and everything. And just thinking about aspect. Exactly. Yeah. Just thinking about nature. Think about um, in, in in the classroom when yeah. the when you look at the literary devices of conflict. You know every story got to have conflict, right? And how they even the, the the categories of conflict according to the Western mind: man versus nature, man versus machine, man versus himself, <laughs> man versus right. super. It's just versus versus versus. You know, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that, I know that that is a mentality that is not an indigenous mentality, you know. And so being in harmony with our environment, as you just said so beautifully, I mean, you get to see the art instead of you know, another another story real quick. Uh, Mama Charlotte O'Neill, her husband, Pete O'Neill and her, uh, they went to Tanzania early in the 70s in, in exile. He was a Black Panther. And had to leave the country because of a, a, a pumped up charge and everything. Make a long story short, she said, I think, no, it was he that said it. He was just talking about how they have complementary kind of perspectives on life, you know. Uh, and they've been together, strong relationship, you know, over 50 years or so, you know. Wow. But they just, you know, when they talk about how so called opposites attract, you know, we just right. even prefer to call it complementarity. But long, long story short, he said that they, they, they rolled into Tanzania. They landed at the airport and got off the plane. 
<laughs> his wife saw the beautiful landscape of the mountains and he saw the tin roofs. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. Same picture. Yeah. Same picture. She is she, she's an artist. Right. Right. She was able to see what you see, you know, what George Washington Carver see. He saw the tin roofs. He said, We in for some <laughs> he came from Kansas City, you know, in the right. 60s, you know what I mean? Right. So it's just, yeah, per perception is everything. We know the name of the class that you'll be teaching tonight. We're so grateful to have you as one of the instructors for um, these intensive classes that we're offering at the Level Up Academy. And it was just came to my spirit to to name the class, you know, Earth, Earth Medicine as the Oracle. And in my mind, you've, You've addressed a lot of that already. And I want to ask you, though, when when you hear Dr. George Washington Carver, you say, you know, I like to think of nature as an unlimited broadcaster. Every hour, there's going to be two minutes. And everything I've heard you say so far, to me, that that's how you live. That's what it is. You know? It's the nature, the earth, the mama earth being out in 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 the a natural environment, and it is the oracle. It it shares with you things about life beyond what can I cook up in the kitchen. Uh, you know, what can I make for my children or whatever. It's something that helps to inform us in so many aspects of life. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, well, you know, I said, as we say, and as we talking, you know, we talking about setting our intentions, mm -hmm. you know, for life. And um, like I said, first, first intention, connect with the earth every morning, every day, mm -hmm. go outside, you know, if nothing else, I go out and I feed my wild cats. You know, and my goats, my daughter's goats, they turn into my goats. You know how our kids are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I, might need, I might need to borrow them goats for a few days, but that's a side conversation. <laughs> These goats are spoiled. They're not, they not going to, do you think that's the whole reason why I wanted goats? I wanted them to eat poison ivy. Right. You know? And these goats ain't ate a lick of poison ivy yet. Now we done had it for like three, four years. You know, <laughs> they want to eat zinnias and spinach and cabbage, and you know, they want to eat what I want to eat. <laughs> um, yeah, but relating um, to just setting intentions and teaching from from the space of um, connecting to outside and and one of the things that is going on is that i think we have to realize we have to get up we got to get up early mm. especially now you know because it's it's a it's a little bit more challenging with climate change and there's no denying it when you open that door at 12 o'clock in the afternoon that it's like going out into an oven you know if, if you were cooking something and the oven was like that you do what you got to do and turn around and close the door and go back, Pretty you know, but we got to, we got to go into it. We got to, um, so I think some of the bigger things now is teaching our kids, you know, to be safe in this environment and still enjoy it because, you know, you got to have electrolytes and electrolytes does not mean, um, certain kinds of fluorescent colored right. drinks. It right. means, we didn't call them the names, right. Yeah, you know, so you need uh, electrolytes are, are trace minerals, and trace minerals is what we get from the earth. So you gotta, they have it in different packs. I, you know, have always taught my kids with emergency and other things like that. Mm -hmm. They gotta put that in their water. They gotta carry water. You can't wait to where you go and think you're gonna get some water. You know, you gotta always be conscious of um, of keeping yourself safe with having, you know, things that are going to create your comfort while you're outside. So you can enjoy outside. You know, you're not out there swinging at bees. We need bees. You know, when I heard you talk about the adversarial relationship, 
Mm. If we didn't have bees, we wouldn't have none of this, you know? Yeah. Now, mosquitoes, that's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, we're still trying to find the, 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 the purpose for mosquitoes. The purpose. <laughs> the purpose. But the bees, we know what the bees are supposed to do. Yeah. So, you know, um, just, you know, helping your children to research, you know, even when they ask a question, just Google it real quick. Some pictures and everything. My kids do that now because my, my daughter wanted a salamander at one time. And I said, well, you know, give me a little a report on salamanders. Mm -hmm. um, then she figured out that salamanders had, you know, salmonella. So mm -hmm. she knew that I wasn't bringing that in here because all of the herbs and everything that we got, you know, no turtles, no, no lizards, you know. I love lizards. They're my spirit animal, but I, they could come in and they could go out. You know, we're not putting them in a jar or a container or anything. So I think, you know, um, in the appreciation of, of looking at how you want your kids, I'm looking at my plum tree, my peach tree, and then I just planted, and my other little um, apple tree right there that I just planted. And the day that I planted those, don't you know, a whole family of deer came over here to check them out? Wow. You know, the, the buck. The, the doe and, and three little dolings, they all came to see where it was so they'll know where to come. Right. But, you know, I got a plan for them for, um, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do the, the, the cat gut. You know, we talked about before the cat gut where you put that around your property at various levels. You stake um, and stretch the cat gut around the perimeter of where you don't want them to go to deer. And deer don't like to fall. So when they come across and they hit and they trip on that cat gut, they will get up and, and run away. And that's fishing wire, fishing line, you know? Mm -hmm. And that way you can keep the deer away from stuff you don't want them to be in, you know? And so you got to do that in January. The fishing line is what you're saying? The cat gut? Yeah, cat gut is fishing line. Yeah, you know? and, you, and, 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 you, what were you, how you, what you did with cats? <laughs> You know what? I think that's an old school name because you know old people told me about this this remedy, and that's what they used to call it is cat gut, but it's fishing line, you know. <laughs> My mind is racing because I heard you talk about your wild cats. I'm like, what well, damn? You just sacrifice one of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a cat gut. That's fishing line. And so you put that out in January when you don't have any cover. Because yeah. right now, I can't even see the back of my property because there's so many leaves and everything. And that's a good thing, mm -hmm. you know? That's a cooling agent. Yeah. Another thing I would say is to teach your children to appreciate trees. One of the things that I was talking to my cousin about the other day, we, we are attracted to neighbors and neighborhoods that have lush foliage and trees. But then when we get ready to move over there, we talking about we don't want to be bothered with the bugs, so we want to cut down everything and make it look like where you just came from. You got to allow the trees to be there. You know, the trees is part of your your um, landscape. It's part of your house. It's part of cooling off your property. It's, it's protection from the elements. I mean, the trees are everything, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the appreciation of trees and and and, and and helping your children to understand that, you know, we are a part of nature. We're not apart from nature. So when when you put them in nature, there's there's not stuff that got to be taken out because I'm here now. <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta blend and work with what's here. You know, and I think that's the biggest thing that we have is well, I'm here now. I don't need all these trees. I all this stuff is just. And then you end up having a six hundred dollar a month. You wondering why? You know? Well, my auntie cut down a tree that made the seventy one year old man across the street from her cry because he remembered when that tree was there from when he used to play in it when he was a little boy, and he was seventy one years old. You know? And so we have to recognize these these trees their lives and they 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 need to be here they've been here before anybody in your family in this country was here 
these trees, you know? And you don't take them out lightly, you know? <laughs> We're talking with Dr. Ashe Faiza, the herb sister. Dr. Herb sister. He's been, as she says, she's been on the front line, you know, for years helping us to return home, really, you know? Part of that welcoming committee, welcoming, returning us to, to our nation, our first estate, which we have been traumatically separated from the African people. Um, before we let you go, because I know class starts tonight, I want to ask you about what you're going to cover in class and everything. You mentioned something, you know, we, I could be on here all day with you. And I know uh, the heat is rising, We've got a hard market today, all kind of stuff going on. Yeah. But um, yeah. you mentioned that, you know, we are separate from them people now. And I want to return to that for a minute because, you know, you and I have had many conversations off the line about, you know, the economy, the geopolitical reality of this world, all of which, in my mind, we get a clearer perspective of when we're earth workers, you know? Yeah. Because even back to that, what Leah Penniman said in that book, that the irony of it is that it's because of the blessed nature of the mama that the trauma or that or the uh, occasion for the trauma that we experience arose in the first place. Yeah. You know, that's, she's a producer. She's the one that give everything. Right. So some people saw that and with their carn carnivorous or, you know, just savage mentality, decided to take advantage of other people so they could get with it. And so the irony of it is we because of created the world economy. We created the world economy. That's, that's what happened. They used our labors, our knowledge, our connection. It's like, you know, it's like getting getting somebody who could give you the inside tip. Mm -hmm. You know, we were the inside tip, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we we created the systems for rice, we created the systems for indigo and and crop rotation. And I mean, we created so many systems and we had such a, 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 a coexistence with mm -hmm. the planet that, you know, when you see that, you say, oh, well, let me let me see how I can get them to do that for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now we need to see how we can do it for us. If you if you take in a whole bunch of prescriptions and stuff, this is your remedy, you know, getting outside and eating off the ground, eating from the ground. That's your remedy, you know, looking at, at just even being able to spend time in with the with the energy of this green. You know, I just painted my lab this green and my son came over the other day. He says it's so calming and um and you know creative and and i said it sure is and it wasn't what i intended i intended for it just to be green because i'm into green of course you know but when he walked he walked into it and he walked out he he noticed that the feeling changed when he walked out of the color you know i mean so color is an energetic source just like vibration is is music is an energetic source mm -hmm. and that's what you do dealing with when you outside you know all the different colors the the sounds of the birds the bati manzel you know that's the hummingbirds mm -hmm. you know the the trinis call it bati manzels y'all probably got another name for it you know <laughs> and um you know making sure that they have their their sugar water that's that tells you right there if somebody doing that much work to fly that you can't see their wings and you can't see them dart from one place to the other and you giving them the same kind of sugar water that you drinking, what kind of work are you doing? That's what I always want to know. <laughs> you know, they needed to fly and flap their wings, you know, 10,000 seconds <laughs> times a second. What you doing with that kind of energy, you know? <laughs> I'm making sure they get their sugar water. Right. <laughs> yeah. These are the questions that come from the earth workers. I just love being out here. That's why I just chose to come out in my backyard to talk with you. Because, as you said, this is 
the way to start the day for real. This is the day starter. When you start like this, that not much go wrong for you because you keep thinking, well, I'm going back outside this evening. I'm mm -hmm. going back out. Everything takes you back outside and it changes you, mm -hmm. you know? And I that, love that, that vibe. Sorry, go ahead. I said, I love, love that vibe, you know? Yeah. What? <laughs> and what you said really, you know, goes to what a lot of the, in quotes, new age philosophers and metaphysicians and everything. This is basically what they're talking about when you talk about the law of attraction and the secret and all this, you know? The feeling is the secret. And so if we tune ourselves into this reality, that's why, you know, for instance, on a real temporal level, people who came up knowing that their mother, their father, you know, is the, is the town boss or the neighborhood done or whatever, they just walk the earth with a different type of swag. And this yes. is something available to all of us. When we put this in perspective, we put nature in perspective and be, become friends with mama nature, you know? Right. You just yeah, this is, this is our swag. Thing. This is our swag. Yeah. 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 We, we walk off the earth with a different type of swag. So your class starts um, this evening, and then there's an online. There's a, there's an online this evening, and then there is a hands-on class on Saturday, which is going to be very powerful. Please share with us what you'll be covering. What you're going to be talking about. What, what can people expect when they come to your class? Well, number one, respect. That's number one. You know. Um, respect for the earth, you know, even when you dealing with weeds and stuff, not everything is a weed weed, you know, um, sometimes you have, have different plants that you might have not planted. Sometimes you let them go for a while and see what they're going to do. And if you don't have nothing planned for that spot, let them do their thing, you know? Um, but we're going to talk about seed selection, um, you know, working with the seasons and the moon cycles and, you know, just making sure that you get into the rhythm instead of forcing things, you get in where you fit in, you know? Um, also, I, you know, for, you know, Saturday, that's another thing about the gardening. We're going to be there early, y'all, because early is best. You get more out of it when you're there early. Um, and we're going to be there until it starts getting warm and then we're going to, you know, do other things later. But tonight, how to, how to garden with the cycles of the moon, seed selection, soil um, selection, and how to improve your soil, um, you know, how to pay attention to what is already growing there and if it's something that you can work with or is it, is it going to be something that is going to completely take over roots and things like that in the soil um even understanding where the sun comes up where the sun goes down the whole thing you know and questions you know because people already have a lot of ideas on what they're gonna do but sometimes it's not realistic for the space that you're gonna use and even um container gardening container gardening is an awesome way to garden especially to start you know um it's, it's, it's very legitimate to get wooden and clay pots and start gardens. Because like here in the forest, the, the tree all the way in the back property line is trying to take water from my little trees right here because you ain't no telling where the roots are. You know, so it, it's all good. We're gonna, we're gonna have a great class tonight. I'm looking forward to talking to everybody um, and you know, managing. Pardon me? Let me say, of course, class is 6 p.m. tonight. Right. It's 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. online. And then right. your class, as you said, on Saturday is 8 a.m. Where it's still nice and cool. And we've been getting a lot of, the rain has come in the last week and given us some relief. I'm so grateful. You, day, and and it gives that those plants the deep watering that they need. I mean, yeah. the, the day after it rained, the next day, everything blossomed. You can mm -hmm. water it every day. But it ain't going to do what the rain is going to do because the rain has an electromagnetic energy that changes outdoors, you know? Absolutely. So the question has been asked, what time is class tonight? We answer that. And how can people register? You can register by going to the link in our bio if you're viewing this right now on whatever Instagram page um, and, and check out Earth Medicine as an Oracle. 
uh, for those people who need um, assistance, you know, who um, need a scholarship, there's a promo code there that you, when you're going to check out, you can just type in scholarship 24 in all caps, scholarship 24, and that will get you into this powerful class with this powerful teacher. You know, and I'm not just saying that just to, you know, just for a matter of course or whatever, because she's on the line with us. I can bear witness. I can bear witness. When I, you know, I got four daughters and they call me and stuff. My first thing is, have you talked to Dr. Ashe? <laughs> they grew up with their formulas, you know what I mean? Yeah. They grew up with their formulas and their mama is, you know, a medicine maker in her own right. Just as, as, as Mama Ashe has been saying, that's what, the women do traditionally. That's what Not mamas the, do. That's what yeah. mamas do. They yeah. heal. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a beautiful thing to be able to have this resource in our community. Now, um, my final question in terms of kind of you kind of started on it a little bit, but I just want to ask this question, especially for the for the benefit of those who may not be able to join us tonight there on the other side of the world or whatever. It's about well, let me before let me just make sure people know the website if you don't have the link in the bio or if you're seeing this another kind of way is is um eventbrite on the farm dot eventbrite dot com it's o n d a f a r m dot eventbrite dot com there's a link for all the level up academy summer 2024 cohort there's dr ashay's class there's grow a life with brother eugene alala and the grow where you are family there's canning and preserving with sister terry carter all very powerful classes that give us practical information. You know, uh, I was talking to Sister Terry about how that's what that's part of Fannie Lou Hamer's great legacy. Not just because she they crashed the Democratic National Convention and all that, but what she did with those co-ops. You know, right. she taught those farmers how to can and preserve their food, and that's what got them through many winters in the segregated. Right. You know? So that leads to. My question now, um, regardless of if the Democrats or Republicans get into office and all of that kind of stuff, we see what the world is coming to. We see the infrastructure of this country crumbling. We see the fact that AI, for instance, is as it stands right now, just in the early stages of public development, it, it's drawing enough power off the physical grid that could power a small state. Right. And so there's so many things happening. And I'm not saying any of this with any kind of doomsday approach. I have a very bright outlook about life, you know. And because I've lived in so called third world countries, I know what it is to have blackouts for days at a time and to have to fetch water if you're going to wash or you want to eat or, you know, whatever, you know. Like they're doing in Texas right now? <laughs> In Texas, you know, and not not we ain't talking about some place in Mexico or China. We're talking about in Texas. Right, so Texas. the point is, yeah, like so, as we move forward into this new stage of existence, because things got to crash for new things to to emerge. You know, again, I want to ask you to just give some basic tips on how we can become friends with the earth, how can we use Mama Earth as our advocate, as our friend, as our healer and all these types of things in terms of just, move, I don't want to say survival, because that, that's a different type of mindset, but just moving through, navigating very tough times, tough times in terms of the, 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 the falling of the infrastructure that most of us in this country have been used to all of our life. What are some I've always been a seed saver. I've always been a seed saver. I am um, now, you know, even more so a seed saver. Um, and I mean, you can sa save seeds from everything that you buy that's, that's particularly that's organic. And, and we're going to talk about that in the class, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure that people recognize all of your seeds you don't have to buy. You getting a lot of seeds on a regular basis, and you don't recognize it, and you, and you, hopefully, you're composting them. You know, mm -hmm. you're not throwing them away. You're composting them, but we need to save them. We need to start um, seed uh, plants, 
you know, um, plant sisters, you know, where you, you, you cuttings and everything. We need to have, you know, a lot of dried beans and rice and, you know, I got jars of that kind of thing. And everybody has to have a pantry with, you know, jars and cans. You know how the grandmas used to have tins of beans and rice. You know, you have to have tins because the little critters, they will recognize and smell that you got that too. And they will come and start making that their food source, you know. So it has to be in something hard. Don't put it in there in the bag that it came in, you know. <laughs> you know, so... People had to start thinking more consciously. And I, I'm pretty sure that they got an indication of it during the pandemic when you recognize when something was available, you better get more than one, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I now see how people who grew up during the Depression saved everything, mm -hmm. you know? Because I, I'm still not out of the habit of buying two or three of stuff from right. the pandemic, you know? Right. And that's not a bad thing, you right. know? So... Um, well, the pandemic is a real eye opener, and it's it's a trip because I was I was so I was so happy that instinct kicked in for so many people. Yeah. And the seeds we've been planting in the community for decades, it, they just started sprouting in terms of people. Like I said, instinct kicked in. So when there's right. uncertainty, you don't know what's in front of you. All you have to go with is your instinct. Right. And our instinct right. is, with, is to be in harmony with Mama Nature, you know? So people started right. eating and getting food and every kind of thing. Unfortunately, we went back to so-called normal. <laughs> well, you know what? It's the new abnormal. That's where we at. Right. The new abnormal, you know? Um, right. But a lot of it is good with people working from home. You know, and and actually even seeing their power as a worker, it 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 in you know it in um, invigorated the unions. I mean, because they recognize you're not doing nothing without us. We need to share in the money. You know, I mean, so it did a lot. It, you know, it it made people powerful again. You know, and and I think that's what this is doing too. Is you able to re-examine your power place? and how many different areas you can um, pull and draw and stack and, you know, um, nurture and you know, enhance. And that's really, you know, and, and even it even helped people to recognize who they wanted to deal with and who they didn't want to deal with, mm -hmm. you know? It's like mm -hmm. who you want to be trapped on the island with. Well, not you, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I think it has and created a lot more power for people and we need to keep that and not give it away. And, um, yeah, you know, and, and, um, and also recognize that from being in that situation, when you have ideas and, and, and motivations and, and, you know, we, they're out here in this energetic. I'm not hearing you. You there? I was like, you need to take those ideas that you're getting from this energetic source and work them because, mm -hmm. you know, you're not guaranteed all the time and later and next week. And these ideas that's out here in this energetic source, you're not the only one that's being fed that idea. That's this right. is out here for whoever will do it. So if you won't do it, then it goes to the next person, you know? Right, right, right. So, that's life science right there. Coming from mom, life science right there. Again, it takes me back to Dr. what Dr. Carver said in his own way, you know? An unlimited broadcasting. And the catch is, especially in this world that we're living in, don't, don't sit on something. Like they say, don't look, look a gift horse in the mouth. You, know? you get a yeah. downhill, you get an idea. Because that's one of the things, one of the gifts for me in the garden is just I get so many ideas. When I'm I exercising, do too. I don't know. I mean, you see my sketch pad or, you know, 
even songs that come to me, they're written on all kind of little yeah. random people or whatever I can just grab at the moment, you know? Yeah. Because well, this I carry, is I carry a pad. I carry a pad of paper because mm. I like to I write that stuff down. I write it down when I'm washing dishes. The vibration of washing dishes gives me ideas. You know, mm. when you get an idea, it's because it's for you. You need to work that, you know? Don't don't yeah. wait till next week. Don't wait for the right people. Don't wait to finish this. Don't wait to get that thing started. You know, Maybe. that's what this has been telling you know from, from the yeah. pandemic on. That's what this has been telling me. And if you got a great idea for people to be able to um, enhance their life, put it out there. You know, yeah. this is what we all looking for is life enhancement. You know. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us. I don't know if we got more to come in today. I'm just very grateful. Yes, me too. Me too. Some, 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 smiling if you're just paying attention to what our mama is sharing with us. So I want to thank you, Dr. H.A. Faiza, for being here with us today and just for being with us. You know, really looking forward to the class. Thank you so much. So the class Saturday will have the garden at P.C. Faiza. Talk about transformation itself. You, you you haven't been here for a while, I know, but, uh, you know, I'm just sharing the wisdom of the Yeah, we 